Hey everyone, welcome to Electrofun. In today's video, we will see how you can interface an I2C based sensor with STM32. So for a sensor uh, that is I2C based over here, I have a Malaxis MLX90614, which is a non-contact based temperature sensor. It gives you a uh, temperature when you just hover your hand around it or just uh, something like that. So this sensor was uh, used widely during the COVID time uh, with that hand uh, temperature monitoring device, which was non-contact based, if you can recall it. So we'll see how we can interface this with STM. So let's get started. So we'll follow the same steps. We'll create a new project over here. We'll select the board. RE. We'll click on next. We'll give the name. I2C. MLX. Tutorial. Just and then. We'll initialize everything by default. Just to make it a little interactive, we'll use the UART over here this time. So what do we need is we need some connectivity which is I2C. So I'll just uh, enable I2C over here. The speed is standard because we are using it as uh, 100 kilohertz. It's not a fast uh, communication over here. It's seven bit, everything looks good over here. We are not using an interrupt. Uh, once, once we initialize this, there will be two pins that will be generated over here, which is PB6 and PB7. Let's just go and see where is PB6 and PB7. PB6 is over here and PB7 PB7 might be somewhere over here as well. Uh, so you see how difficult that is. But we know that Arduino Morpho has these two pins that are uh, SDN and SCL. So what we can do is we can use the connectivity uh, alternate functions, uh, alternate function, uh, alternate fin, pin function feature. So it's PB8 and PB9, which is very clear. So PB8, all we have to do is select I2C clock. So you see it shifted from PB6 to PB8. And now this is data. So I'll just do data. So it shifted. So now it's very standard. It's very visible that SDA is this that pin that is written over there. And SCL is the same pin. So we will save this. We'll generate the code and we'll start defining some variables over here. Variables. So we'll have a character that has two space for I2C data. We'll have a variable to print something. Successfully new communicated with I2C device I2C. This will just make it a little interactive. We'll have a temperature. Now let's start. So what do we need? We can do two things over here. One is directly start with the slave address try to communicate with uh, communicate with the sensor and then read it but just to make it a little more uh, simpler what i will do is first i'll open the data sheet this is the data sheet it's a malaxis uh, 90614 family non-contact based ir based temperature sensor i'll scroll down i'll look for the slave address it has to be somewhere so slave address factory default is 5a now 5a is the slave address but it's not actually the slave address what what is that so we'll see first 
there are a lot of functions that we have no idea about so we'll just open the i2c driver just to take a look at some functions so we'll go on include i2c dot h we'll scroll all the way down where all the functions are defined and what we'll do is we we are we are using a normal um, polling mode which is not interrupt based so these are the polling uh, apis over here and we have to see which API we can use. So we'll use this is device ready over here. That's the first one. And then we'll uh, then we'll use the memory read over here. We are not writing anything. We are just reading a particular set of EEPROM values. So let's just copy this one. Come over here. Paste it. It takes how many parameters it takes? Type def device address trials and timeout so type def is h i 2 c 1 it if if you're not clear how so it's over here then it takes the f address i'll i'll explain you why i have b5 over there number of tries we want one try and then uh, the timeout 100 and what does this function do it if if I click over here we'll see what it does it returns either hard error hard busy or hard okay whatever is based on that so we will just see if we get hard okay over here so and then if we have hal okay we'll just transmit so h u r 2 because that's the second one we use this pa2 and pa3 which is the default uh, ur2 that come that is directly with usb and then we want to print the tx data with the size of tx data that's all so how did i came across this b5 we just saw the slave address is 5a what we want to do is we just want to communicate if actually we are able to communicate or get some response when we try to communicate with a 5a so the whole concept is it's 5a but we have to shift that number of bits to left so by one so we'll shift left now that will give us a value which is b4 but now um, if you remember how the or if you know a little bit about how i2c protocol works it has a slave address and the other last bit is either read or write so what we are doing over here is we we just writing something so that we get some response over back from the slave uh, from the slave device so we'll add one so b4 plus one will give me b5 and at this this is the address at which it should communicate now coming to while so we can run it and we can just see this so I'll just build and meanwhile I'll just quickly do the connections to drive my uh, sensor the sensor I think that I'm using um, so it gave us a bunch of errors let's see how we can resolve them once I'm done with my connections so I think the sensor that I'm using internally has a voltage uh, LDO but uh, just to be safe I'm not I don't want to uh, destroy anything over there what just happened so it says undefined reference to UART so let's see what is the correct 
API for that. We'll open the UART.h. And look for UR transmit. Takes size handle type def and character is too long. Okay, let's do this fifty. And that error is gone. And now, so let's copy this and paste it over here. So now that error is gone. I think it was some error with the API API that I have I had used. Don't remember a lot of APIs that STM has. So, okay, I am done with the connections. Now I'll just connect it and I'll just run it. Okay, and then I'll just open real term port. The default uh, baud rate is 115200. And then change and then I'll open. And then I'll press reset. Don't have anything over here. Let me just see. I'm not sure. I'll upload the code again. me see if I have all the connections correct looks correct to me mm. serial port okay no idea what was wrong with the uh, real term but okay so uh, I'm pressing reset right now so it comes in the flow it reads that if it gets hal okay it goes into this if and then it prints whatever the tx data we have which is successfully communicated with i communicated with i2c so we we are done one step where we are actually able to communicate now what we'll do is we'll try to read the data out of that so coming back again over here we'll use this memory read We'll copy it. Now that takes a bunch of parameters, type def, device address, memory address. So my type def is I2C1. My slave address is B4 over here. What I'm what I want to read now coming back to the data sheet. So this is basically what we have to read. We are trying to read the temperature of object one, which is nothing but uh, the temperature when we put a finger or put any object in front of that IR. So it's zero, 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 zero X, zero seven. I'll come over here. I'll write that zero X, zero seven. What was the other parameter? memory address size then where do I need to store the data and data size memory address size would be 1 and then we want to store that data if you remember we created a variable so we'll just copy that variable 
pasted over here but now that's a character we'll have to typecast that and then we want to read two bytes of data and then the timeout will be 100 so this way what it will do is it will read two bytes of data and then those two bytes have to be decoded so this is where I'm getting that information of how many byte data is actually so if you look at this communication example so this is the command b4 this is 007 it I, I read that then I have the LSB byte and MSB byte and then we have to decode that byte basically so what I'll do is I have raw I'll just make a variable with raw temperature now what we'll do is I to see data of one over here we'll shift this 8 by 8 and we will XOR that I to see data with 0 so basically this will align that for us and then a big back big bracket and then once we have that we'll use the variable that we created raw temperature now that the raw temperature what happens with that raw temperature in the data sheet if you scroll all the way down there's some math that goes into that where um, I'll just show that this is the math that it says that we need to do some multiplication and division to get to a particular value once we have the actual uh, raw data so what I'll do is I'll just do that 273.15 and then I'll give a small delay of 100 milliseconds. I'll compile this. Let's upload and see if we get some relevant data. So we can put a breakpoint over here and then step uh, each line and see the temperature value. Or I have a software which is called STM Studio over here. What, what I can do is I can just import the uh, stuffs that I want so I'll just go all the way where I have my cube ID workspace and then I'll come to debug and we have to select this ELF execu executable file it will show all the variables that you have in your code we need the temperature so I'll just import that and I'll close this and then I'll import that to war view and then we'll make this as table and then I'll start so this is what the current temperature is right now I'll put a finger right across that to see if the temperature changes I'm a little cold but not that much as well so this is how uh, you can interface an I2C based temperature sensor with STM32. I hope all the steps that I explained uh, were a little clear. So I moved my hand again. So you see it's very quick in terms of giving you an actual temperature. That is the reason it was widely used uh, on our forehead during COVID times. So I hope you have understood this video. Uh, if you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section below. I will answer all of them. And until then, see you. Thank you.